Hello everyone, this is Amaryllis Korea from Ace Travels here again. Today, I'm super excited to share with you guys um, two wonderful ladies who run a cultural center in Roatan, Honduras. Uh, I had the opportunity to visit this amazing place and I was so enthralled by it that I wanted to bring them on to talk a little bit more mm -hmm. about um, what they offer travelers who visit Roatan or the beautiful island of Roatan. So um, Audrey Flores and Nora Flores are the owners of the Garifuna Cultural Center in Punta Gorda, Roatan. Um, they are uh, a community um, or the first Garifuna a settlement in Central America, and they they have um, they service the community that is Punta Gorda, which is the Garifuna um, settlement. Um, they share their unique culture uh, with the world, with travelers, um, while working behind the scenes to make sure that they're preserving that culture as well. The culture itself is fascinating. I, like I said, I had the chance to learn about it, so I wanted to bring them on to sh so they can share more firsthand uh, what they do at the center with everyone who visits. So I'm going to turn it over to Audrey. So Audrey, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey. Why, what made you start this business and, you know, whatever details you want to share. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Amarilis. Uh, thank you for stopping by the center when you did come. I really appreciate the support and thank you for having my sister and I here on your platform. Um, hey everyone, my name is Audrey Flores and I am the co-founder of the Garifuna Cultural Center in Punta Gorda, Roatan, the first Garifuna settlement in Central America. And my sister Nora, um, she's my partner in crime with this, with this project that started about 10, or actually started five years ago, but our journey and learning more about who we are as Garifuna women started about 10 years ago. And uh, my sister and I, we were born and raised in New York. My parents are Garifuna, both of our parents are Garifuna and they're from Punta Gorda. And so we have roots in Roatan and that that's, uh, thank God we have roots because if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have survived the transition, I believe, from New York to Roatan 10 years ago. <laughs> Um, so we moved from Brooklyn to, to Roatan in 2011, and that was a crazy idea that my sister Nora had. My parents uh, always had a business there. It was a bar and a restaurant, formerly known as the Flamingo Bar. It was a, the number one night spot. Everyone would go to party and hang out. And so in 2011, the person who was renting it decided to stop renting. And so my parents, they were faced with a decision of what to do next. And we were adults. I was 24, Nora was 21 or 22. Yeah, I was and 21. Hi guys. Yeah. Nora, yeah. I got myself muted a little because my kids are acting crazy. But, <laughs> but it's your partner, like, you, wanna explain, yeah. you wanna explain the move since you started it? You know, it started as what I thought was a crazy idea 10 years ago. But now looking in hindsight, I realized that it was our ancestors and a higher power really using us to do their yeah, work, yeah, yeah. to tell the story of our ancestors. You know, and I then, say that there's no crazy idea. If the idea comes to you, it's for a reason, so. Wow, thank you, yes. thank you, yes. Yes. right. And so as we have learned ourselves more as women and as Garifuna women and learning our culture more, you know, I feel like that's where the growth, because when we first moved to, to Roatan, it was really for us to manage our parents' business, you know, but as we spent more time there, we saw the need for sustainable tourism. We saw how much others and even some of our own people of our community didn't value our culture you know and we were like you know we can we're in a position where we can change this you know i'm sorry i have to mute again i don't know if you hear the baby <laughs> okay. but i just wanted yeah. to introduce myself so i am the business partner this is audrey and i's idea but i am in new york right now so audrey is full-time in Roatan, and i am part-time in Roatan for now so i'm back and forth between new york and Roatan. so I'm out. I'm I'm here, but I'm gonna mute myself. So. <laughs> <laughs>
So when Nora decided to move, since we're so close and we, we've always been partners in crime, naturally I said, well, let me go and follow Nora. Um, my idea was to find a manager for the business to help out because I was a diehard New Yorker, corporate America, into like the Starbucks, riding the train, like a real New Yorker, 24 and single, right? So... <laughs> Who wants to leave New York? Um, but like Nora said, in hindsight, we, we realized that God was using us. You know, he was really using us. And we we stayed and we continued as a bar and a restaurant. Mind you, the idea of the cultural center was far from us at that point. We were just running the bar. And two years into running it, we got tired of drinking and partying pretty much for the past two years, for two years straight. Like, come on. And but it was enticing. We were young, single. Uh, I, I was single and no kids and 24. And so it was like the vanity and the entertainment was the bait that God used to keep me there long enough to find my purpose. <laughs> okay. And so eventually we began answering so many questions that people would ask, who are Garifuna people? Where do you come from? What is this? What is that? And so Nora and I began to ask these questions to our elders, to our other Garifuna friends. We would go to other Garifuna communities and eventually we became so um, enthused with our own culture. And so we realized, like Nora said, number one, someone needs to preserve this culture and it's not being done. And if we don't do it, who's gonna do it? Right. It has to get done. And so that's when the idea of the cultural center came about. And so we uh, we started doing these shows. Uh, I remember it was a process. One of the shows was called, I'm Garifuna, Google it. <laughs> And so, yeah, so um, we would uh, do these shows where we would just explain the culture and it was like, it was so crazy, not planned or anything, but I'm glad that we just threw ourselves in there because we learned so much. And so now uh, in 2000... That was a throwback, Audrey, I forgot about that. Right? <laughs> We've come a long way. Yeah. We've come a long way. Well, I have to tell you, when I went, I... <laughs> I had heard about the Garifuna culture because I do planning, obviously for clients, and I do some. Um, I had plans and stuff in Belize, and I had been to Belize, and so I had heard about the culture there, not realizing that it expanded down to Honduras and to Nicaragua as well. I mean, I think sometimes we think about Honduras or Nicaragua like those countries, and we just think Latinos. That's it. Like we don't think about anything else, and so. When I found out that you guys had a cultural center, I was like, I need to visit this because I need to understand more about this culture. Mm -hmm. I wanted to learn more. It made it just to me. It was like fascinating to learn the history, to learn how you had come from, you know, the Caribbean, you know, mixed with the Native American or not, well, the Indians that lived there at the time, the Arawak, right? And then yeah. you were you basically were pushed out by the British and settled in Central America. Like, I exactly. had no clue, I just learned that. I was like, this is amazing. Exactly. <laughs> And that's why we love partnering up with um, travel partners such as yourself, Amarilis, and Ace Travels because um, anywhere in the world, if you're traveling to look for culture, you most of the time you need to really do your research. It's easier to find an ATV or a zip line or a beach, but to find culture is it, kind of difficult, you know? Yeah. So that's why we- You gotta kind of know somebody local to really get that real authentic experience so that's another thing that we're trying to change so you know and i feel like now god is sending us the right people you know the universe is just responding yes <laughs> exactly. it all comes together it really does i mean you really i just to me i think what you're doing is amazing um not and i think not just for travelers who come from abroad right but also for your local like other hondurans right. who are from honduras that maybe don't understand like yes. the history of your community absolutely right? so i think it's amazing that you're bringing that to the forefront and helping them understand so share a little mm -hmm. bit about what experiences you offer to those who visit the center so our most popular experience ah. sorry okay <laughs> <laughs> 
Our most popular experience is called the Garifuna Immersive Package. And this experience starts with a basic breakdown of who Garifuna people are, where we come from. Um, we also have two stations. One station is where we show how we make a traditional snack, which is cassava bread. But we have the authentic original instruments that are over 200 years old. And so we explain how it's done. And you also get we also explain a traditional drink that's very common. It's called Gifferty. So we show you how we make it and we also give you a taste. And then we have this mesmerizing, soul-shaking folk dance performance by our folk dance team. And we explain a little bit about some of the, the Garifuna dances. And of course, those who want to get down with us can participate and dance to the beat of our drums. And the experience ends with a delicious home-cooked garifuna or Caribbean meal, whichever one you, we have a bunch of options. We also have options for children and for people who aren't so adventurous when it comes to food, like a cheeseburger and a cheese chicken fingers, we don't discriminate, <laughs> we understand. So we have something for everybody. That's our, that's our most popular um, package. We also have drumming classes, cooking class, and we just added a painting class, which is excellent for people traveling with children. We have a Garifuna artist who comes and he shows the children how to do the painting. And wherever you paint, we use recyclable, recycled materials. And whatever you paint, you can take it home as a souvenir. So that's most parents with children combine both packages so they can enjoy the immersive experience while their children are painting. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> now, let me ask you a question. For those, um, I know there's people who go visit Roatan and they stay for several days, but then you guys also have a lot of cruises that come in. So people are there for the day. So if someone was coming in on a cruise, how could they... Um, potentially spend the day at your cultural center to to be able to experience all of this like is there is there a way to to do for that cruise ship, yes for cruise ship people i definitely recommend that you coordinate your trip with a travel agent it could be with amarilis from h travels and it or it can be with us directly um cruise ship people uh you guys have a time constraint and so your trip needs to be uh strategic we are located on the east end of the island of Baratan, which is about 30 or 40 minutes away from the cruise ship ports. There's two cruise ship ports. Yeah. And so um, we tend to combine the Garifuna cultural experience with one more experience on that side of the island, which is a boat ride through the mangrove tour. And it also gives you a highlight of the other culture of Baratan. And so I recommend cruise ship guests to combine both experiences, which is three to four hours, which is perfect for a cruise ship passenger because then you can return to your ship two hours before it leaves. And so I definitely recommend either organizing your trip with a travel agent or directly with the cultural center. Yeah. Now, what do you find um, for people who visit or who have visited, what do you find tends to be their favorite experience? at the center like uh, what, do they, what do you see people get the most like enjoyment out of not that the other ones are not great but you know what I mean <laughs> yeah it, it has to be um a tie between the the dance and the food <laughs> It has to be a tie. Uh, they love the dance, not for nothing, but our dance team, they get down okay. and they are very soulful and we try to keep it as authentic and as old school as possible. <laughs> so they're really good. And the food is just, it's so natural. You know, we, our, whatever we make with coconut is fresh coconut, no coconut in the can. The fish is always fresh and the, the food is cooked right then and there. So it's not food that's been cooked for days or has been, you know, heated up from, from earlier in the day. It's, it's fresh. And that's, that's the most word we get flavorful and fresh food. <laughs> wow. Now, can people dance with your dance? Group? Oh, of course. That is definitely highlight of so many people's experience with us. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, now, what is, um, obviously you want your guests to walk away with a deeper understanding of your culture. Um, is there anything else that you hope they take away from their time and visit with you? As, as I mean, obviously having that understanding is key, but is there anything mm -hmm. else that you feel like 
maybe a guest has said to you, this really resonated with me because of X, Y, Z, like whatever that case may be. Definitely. Um, what I, I, what I would like our guests to walk away from is to reconnect with their roots. I'm Garifuna and you're, you might be something else, any guests that come, but everybody come from an original group of people. Right. And when you reconnect and you get to know your original group of people, whatever that is for you, you tend to learn certain things that money cannot buy. For, um, for example, for me personally, reconnecting with my Garifuna roots taught me about postpartum recovery, you know, the indigenous way. And my postpartum recovery with my third child was completely different than one and two. After my third child, I felt like I was six months postpartum and I was just six weeks postpartum and you know certain things like that reconnecting with our spirituality you know life is not perfect but reconnecting with spirituality has grounded me to the point where I feel like I you know I'll no longer fall down because of this wave of negativity I I can stumble (laughs) but you ain't gonna knock me down again (laughs) Yeah. yeah so true that's amazing. That is awesome. I love that answer. Like to yeah. connect with your roots because I think people get so caught up in their day to day and they lose touch of that. And even so now, you know, I'll say like, so I'm Puerto Rican, but obviously Puerto Ricans were a mix of different backgrounds as well, right? Like, you know, we have the Taino Indian. Um, the African, and then obviously some uh, European as well, right? Like we have Spaniards mm-hmm. and we have French who've come over the Italian. What, what I will say though is, um, despite all of that mixing, the Puerto Rican culture is very, very distinct. It is vi- like, mm-hmm. there are things like you're like, oh, that's very Puerto Rican, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? And so um, as, as somebody who grew up in a house, I grew up in the States as well. Um, but I grew up in a household where my parents had just moved to the States when I was born. Um, and I grew up in a household where everything was done very, very much the Puerto Rican way. Like we, we mm-hmm. watched Spanish TV programming, we spoke Spanish, we ate Puerto Rican food. And so while I grew up in the United States, I still grew up in this bubble of like, almost like I was, almost like I was in Puerto Rico, but I wasn't, right? Like. Um, and, he, and maybe when I was younger, I didn't have that appreciation. But as I got older, I really, really appreciated having that that connection to my roots and understanding my culture, you know, as as well as I did. So I agree. I definitely agree. So I encourage people, regardless of what it is, maybe you do your DNA and you realize you have a big percentage of I- Irish in you. Go to Ireland, discover the culture, learn about it, right? Because exactly. like you said, it's going to help you understand things about yourself. So exactly. <laughs> so if so, I always like to ask this question because I think okay. it says a lot, especially when you're talking to somebody who's from that destination, who's lived there sometimes. So if someone were to say to you, "Tell me one reason why I should go to Roatan," what should it be? What would it be? <laughs> um. One, I, I would say, Ratan, you go, Nora. You want to go? Mm. Mm, I don't know. I would definitely, I would, it's it, the culture because there are so yeah. many different cultures. There's so much diversity. Like you have the Garifuna, but you also have um, the the descendants of the Mayans, the, what we call the, the Indios, like the yeah. Spanish people. Then you have the the white islanders. Roatan is such a melting pot, mm-hmm. you know? And like, you could spend one day in PG in Punta Gorda, you could spend another day in like Flowers Bay is one of my favorite um, Afro-Caribbean uh, communities, you know? Mm-hmm. So they're like English speaking, they're black island islanders like us, but they're not Garifuna, you know, but we're all still connected and you can see the similarities and the differences. Like uh, one of our, one of the staples in the Garifuna um, gastronomy is the machuca or the hudutu, mm-hmm. which is a seafood um, stew with a side of mashed plantains. So the Black Islanders have this dish that they call the McCoy. 
and it's very similar to the machuca. You know, mm -hmm. the only difference is instead of seafood, they use like different meats, you know, but it's still a coconut broth. It's still, like we so they call it a sauce. So like <laughs> that's what we call it in Arata. So that's my favorite part about Arata. Like that's what I would recommend because it's like you can travel through three or four different cultures on in one state. You know, if you stay like a good five days. And then like, if you're into diving, we have the second largest coral reef in the world. So it's great for divers too. So like, even if you're into diving, you can go like plan a dive trip, but you can also get a dip into the culture of the island. You know, there's great zip lines. I am a beach bum personally. So to me, that was my number one reason for going to Roatang. Or it's a tie between the culture and the beach to me. <laughs> I can't even put one in front of the other, but we have crystal clear water, white sand, like some of the be most beautiful beaches in the Caribbean. Uh, yes, so I agree. <laughs> I feel like, I think that's why I was stuck in the beginning because I feel like there's not one, like I have like two or three different reasons why. <laughs> I feel like, you know, Rotan should definitely be a destination for anyone. Because we have a little bit of something for everyone. They have these, um, I like the, um, what is it, Audrey, the, the Gumbalim, where is it? Or the Iguana Farm? The Iguana Farm, yeah. Mm -hmm. They have, like, so there's different places you could go. Like, if you're into animals, you can go see the spider monkeys, the iguana. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you guys you, have animal sanctuaries. Yeah, that's yes. the word. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Animal sanctuaries. Right. Yeah. Um, there's a chocolate factory in West Bay. There's so many. There's so much things to do. Mm -hmm. in Rota. Like, I feel like if you spend a, a good week, five to seven days, is enough to, to get a little bit of everything. Yes. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Audrey, what would you tell someone who asked you? What me? It was the culture, the culture for me, definitely the the diverse culture. And you, I actually had a guest at the center last week, and they mentioned that they stayed one week on the east end, one week on the west end, and one week in the middle. And she said it's unbelievable how each part right. had, had their own vibe. Yeah, they love it. It's true, especially <laughs> for such a small island. Like it's right. not even that big. <laughs> Right, right. That's the most like part of it. Fifty places in one. <laughs> right, right, right. Mm -hmm. right. I tell clients all the time. Um, so I'll get clients who come to me and they kind of they want to go to the Caribbean. They want beach, but they're not quite sure what destination they want. And inevitably, Roatan always comes up as an option that I give to them. And I feel like it is one of the most understated destinations in the Caribbean. Thank um, you. It is, yeah. I, I, I think it gets. I think it gets lost because it's in Central America, and so people mm -hmm. never don't don't really correlate it with the Caribbean. Even right, it's pretty much Caribbean as any other of the islands in the Caribbean. You know. That yes. is. So thank you for highlighting. Yeah. We've been trying to explain that to people for years. Like exactly. <laughs> but we are Caribbean like we're yeah. as Caribbean as it gets <laughs> well you know I think the other thing is it's under it's overshadowed oh. by the fact that Honduras in comparison to like a Costa Rica or a Guatemala or a Panama it doesn't get the same tourism appeal that, that some of those other countries do and because mm -hmm. they see Roatan Honduras in their head they're like oh no so yes yeah. When I bring it up to people, I'm like, have you thought about Roatan? It's a five hour flight from, you know, like a New York. It's, um, I said, you're going to get the beach experience. You're going to get the Caribbean waters. You, can, you know, you're going to get those warm waters, but you're also going to get culture and you're going mm -hmm. to be able to do the animal sanctuary. Like people's, they, their faces light up, like their eyes light up and they're like, oh, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even know that right. that was even an option. Right, right. So, yeah. um, I don't know who runs Roatan, but you need to do a little bit more with your tourism. So you, yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, it does, definitely gets lost. It gets lost in the mix. Mix, and for me, I feel like it's such um, I, I, it's such a shame because it's such a beautiful destination. Granted, you don't, you also don't want it to get overrun by tourism, but at the same right. time, you know, it'd be nice mm -hmm. if people considered it. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about what you love most about what you do. Is it interacting with people? Is it um, just, what What do you love most about what you do? I, I can go first. Um, I like that we, 
I like that we're carrying on our ancestors. Mm. When I walk into the center, I feel so connected with spirit. And I just feel like I'm living my purpose. And if I was to die tomorrow, my what I did would outlive me. Yeah. Oh. You know, oh, and that's so powerful. <laughs> I agree. That is so yes, beautiful. Yes. I love yes. 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 I can feel that. That is definitely, I, I share those same sentiments. But for me, I like connecting with other, when people come and from other cultures to the center, and it's just seeing how, although we are different, we are all still connected. There's always some similarities between our culture and other people's cultures. Oh my God, I'm so happy you said that. Because yeah. one of the things I tell people, part of the reason why I love the niche of cultural immersion is because I, genu I genuinely believe the same thing. Like people at our core, we're a lot more similar than we are different. Right. Mm -hmm. We eat different foods. We may listen to different music. We may... Um, do things a little bit differently. We may have different religious beliefs, spiritual, whatever the case may be. But at right. our core, we're all human. And we exactly. all have basic human needs and requirements, right? We want to we want to yeah. feel safe. We want to feel loved. We want to feel part included, right? Like mm -hmm. that is all at a core. We're all like that. And I really feel that when people take on this whole idea of doing cultural travel, it helps to create more empathetic and compassionate people. Yes. And the world needs more of that. Yes, absolutely. You said right? it perfect. Mm -hmm. If you understand those people, like those people over there, they may eat, they may eat differently. They may speak a little different language. They may have different customs, but I now understand why they do the things that they do and how they do them and so forth. So now if they're struggling or they need help, I'm more compassionate. I'm more empathetic. I mean, it shouldn't take, it shouldn't require that as human beings, but still, I think it's just one step closer to getting to that place where people are more understanding, I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So um, I definitely agree with your statement. Um, <laughs> what do you, do you guys, are you guys big travelers or no? <laughs> Yes. 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 And we have young kids, so I know it's we, a little harder with I was about kids. to say that. Yeah, we <laughs> travel a lot more before we had these three small children, but yes, yeah, yeah. still very much a passion of mine. <laughs> so aside, so aside from Roatan, what's your favorite de destination? I don't have a favorite destination. I think Roratai is my favorite destination. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't want to be biased, but... <laughs> but yeah. yeah. I really enjoyed St. Vincent when we went. Mm -hmm. I can go back because it reminds me so much of Roatai. It's is crazy. There, when, you, when you went to St. Vincent, is there still a presence of the Garifuna culture there? So there are people who know that they are descendants of the Garifuna, but the language is completely lost. The spirituality, it's 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 lost. It's very. You have a, um, a few, like a very small, I would say maybe five percent of people that are trying to actively um, reconnect with the Garifuna mm -hmm. and and learn, relearn. You okay. know. But that, so that is one of our short-term goals, right? Or do you like to really yeah. solidify that connection? That's yeah. St. Vincent, revive the Garifuna culture in St. Vincent. Mm -hmm. Because because of the nature, like we were exiled. And so the Garifunas that stayed in St. Vincent were, were oppressed. They basically had to live in hiding and, and in order to survive. So after four, Maybe even you just need one or two generations of that and the, and the culture would be lost. Exactly. Yeah. So that's basically what happened. They, they, they don't speak the language, they don't dance, mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. dances, any of the, any like anything like that. Mm -hmm. So we want to start having more cultural exchanges so that we can bring more people from St. Vincent into Central America so that they can learn hands-on. Um 
different aspects of our culture so that they can go back and spread that. I feel like that's the only way it's going to take a couple of years, but I feel like eventually, 20 years from now, St. Vincent could, you know, it could be on a level where people are speaking Garifuna there again. Or you could, maybe you'll start a second cultural center. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> set the intention, set the intention. Yes, we're going to expand. We, we do plan to expand the cultural center. <laughs> awesome. 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 Um, all right. Well, I know I've taken up a lot of your time. Um, this has been awesome. I love, I just, I love having these conversations. Where can folks find you guys online if they're looking to pay a visit, if they're going to be in Rotan and they really want to check, you know, the center out? So um, our website is www.garifunacc.com. We're also on Facebook and Instagram at Garifuna Cultural Center. And you can email us to info at garifunacc.com. And I will include all of those links in the description of the video as well. So if anybody yeah. you know wants to access, um, you have the links of readily available. Um, Thank you. So that is it for today's episode. I want to um, thank everyone. Well, first, let me thank Audrey and Nora for their time. I appreciate uh, you sharing all the wonderful details about your culture and about Roatan. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out to Audrey and Nora. They are very responsive. I can tell you that from my own <laughs> interactions with them. Oh, thank you. Um, so definitely don't hesitate um, and just let us know if you have any questions. We are always thrilled to be able to provide more information. Yes. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Click the subscribe button to get notified when we post more videos featuring other cultural tour experiences from around the world and additional travel related content.